The, the scientific name is, is Brassica carinata. So as is indicated, it's, it's related to the brassicas, which are your broccolis, your cabbage, uh, canola, Brussels sprouts, that whole group. So uh, we do know about the crop, uh, even though we haven't had very many years experience with it. What we're really excited about it is, is the idea of trying to get a, a cash-based winter cover crop because we know that we have to protect our soils in the winter. We can't leave them bare. So uh, uh, we're trying to provide the growers with, with a cash incentive to have a good cover crop system. And the intent is that they would plant in November and then harvest in April and May, and then that would, allows them to get out of the cropping system and then get back into their summer crops. But we're looking at this as something that integrates into a year-round rotation. One of the big benefits, of course, is, is the control of soil erosion uh, as, as, a, as a cover crop would. But the other thing that we're looking at is we think that this may even be a nitrogen extractor. So a lot of times after corn and cotton, you leave nitrogen in the soil. And we're hoping that this as a cover crop will get some of that nitrogen back. And, and we're hoping with the yields that we're expecting that we can maybe get 50 pounds of nitrogen per acre back out of that soil that, that could possibly go in the groundwater and get it back up into a crop and back into the farmer's pocket as cash. So, so we're real excited about that as a possibility. We're only harvesting the seed out of this, and so we're harvesting maybe out of all this uh, biomass here, we're going to be taking out maybe uh, 1,500 pounds, 2,000 pounds, 3,000 pounds of seed, and then the rest of that plant gets turned back into the soil. Uh, so we're looking at increasing the, the organic matter in the soil with that, but then also the plant includes um, some compounds they call glucosinolates, which when they break down, produce uh, a soil fumigant. It's a natural soil fumigant, and we're hoping that that then may control parasitic nematodes uh, that are a real problem problem in this area, especially in the sandier soils. The things that we're working specifically at the center is we're looking for, for cold tolerance is a, is a big issue as, as we get these cold fronts coming through, um, and we're making good progress on that. And they're also looking at, at you know, the obvious things, increasing yield, increasing the amount of oil in the seed. The oil from the seed is uh, very adaptable to be used as a jet fuel or diesel or even gasoline. Uh, in fact, it's the only oil that's produced naturally that can be used as 100% jet fuel. The other oils have to be blended. And so we're real excited about that. And that's brought in interest from, uh, from the military as well as the commercial aviation industry. The, these crops, the oil is going to be put into jet engines by the, by the, the Navy and they're going to, to find out just how all that system works. Where else this can go, you know, we really don't know, but we really think it fits well in the southeast. One of the things that the, that the growers like is, is to have a market to where, where they can sell their crop. And uh, if, if things go well, um, you know, we see this as, a, as an industry developing here in Florida, and there's a lot of things that have to be done. But if all of that does happen, uh, we're gonna have a, a really efficient biofuel in the Southeast.